All right, Steve Jobs, I, I, I realize this is your baby and you've made a, you made a career out of it, but uh, you're also something of a philosopher. Do you see the, the inherent possibility of, of bad coming out of all of this? Well, I think uh, one of the things you really have to look at is you have to go watch some kids using these things. And what you find is far from something quite harmful. Uh, in effect, what you see is an instantaneous reflection of a part of themselves, the creative part of themselves being expressed. He was going for a computer that really felt like an extension of the self. That's what people wanted, and I think he sensed that, he knew that. My first book on the computer culture was called The Second Self. And the key quote that gave me the title was when you think of a computer, you put a little piece of your mind into the computer's mind, and you come to think of yourself differently. Did you have an opportunity to, to meet Jobs? Yes, I met him on several occasions. And did you sense from talking to him that he really did understand what he was doing? I think he understood what he was doing. He knew he had created something intimate and that could be sold as something intimate. That it would be you. I mean, it would be for you. It wasn't just for you. It, it was you. Can you just show me the front of it so that so that now that's the part that most people would recognize? This is the piece, piece that everybody remembers from the ads from the Time magazine cover with Steve holding it in his lap. And this is the famous beige that we're never going to have any more of. He hated this even at this time, but we were kind of stuck with it by the time we got there. It was a fun little machine. He called me just out of the blue. I was working at Xerox. And uh, I picked up the phone, and it was Steve Jobs. And he said, uh, I hear you're a good guy, but everything you've done so far is crap. Come work for me. I told my, my wife at the time, I said, well, what, what could happen? How bad could this be? <laughs> I didn't realize how bad it could be. first trip Steve ever made to Japan was to see what we could do about getting a disk drive for the machine. And we saw the Sony disk facility in Atsugi, Japan. He had a lot of affection for Sony because the Walkman was a machine that he just thought was the bee's knees. I think it was the per first product in human history that went over a billion units. That he liked. One of the things that Steve thought was important in Jerry Manick facilitated was, this is where all the signatures are, and there are all the people, the original group, that actually signed the machine. There's Steve Jobs, right in the middle. My name is over here. Why did you do that? Because the people that worked on it consider themselves, and I certainly consider them, artists. These are the people that under, under different circumstances would be painters and poets, but because of the, that time that we live in, this new medium has appeared uh, in which to express oneself to one's fellow species, and that's a medium of computing. We would sit in the temples in Kyoto, just taking off our shoes at the door and sitting. Did he take from that any kind of aesthetic vision, do you think? I think certainly. The simplicity, just feeling that inner calm that's so available at places, at some places in Japan. He was very much a person who was comfortable in silence. 